Welcome to the first edition of Chamber Chat on the Street for our new year, 2021. And it is my privilege today to welcome Dr. Maria Gallo, president of Delaware Valley University, our hometown university. Welcome, Dr. Gallo. It's good, good to see you, Vale. One of the things I just saw in the press is that DelVal University uh, was to be picked for a testing site. And I was wondering if you could update the business community on that and vaccination sites also. Great. Well, thank you for that question. Yes, we initially were contacted to be a site and um, we're still willing to do that. But the county has decided to go elsewhere with the uh, testing site. Is that through the community college system? Right. I think right now they're holding it at uh, the different locations for Bucks County Community College. Correct. I'd like to ask, just ask you one question about that. Do you know who can go through those testing sites? Can anybody or do they need a doctor's order? Well, we'll have to check to be sure, but my understanding was that anybody could be tested. They wanted to increase okay. the number of people being tested. Okay, thank you for that. Yeah, you're welcome. One of the things that you are so good at is leading through turbulent times. Would you share with the business community how you've handled this pandemic, how you've pivoted some of your leadership tips, if you will? Well, well great, thank you. I, I think that um, it really required everybody. I'm so proud of the entire DelVal community coming together and working as one to get through this pandemic with the students as our, our primary focus. So uh, what we did was gather as much information as we could about the virus, about the implications and what we needed to do in order to um, navigate through this um, where everybody is safe and we're still delivering a really great education. So we uh, were in partnership with uh, Doylestown Health System uh, with Dr. Damsker, uh, Bucks County Department of Health, and even some of our alumni who are actively involved in uh, COVID research. Looking at the data, understanding uh, the guidelines that the CDC put out and, um, and the Commonwealth and following those. And so we put together a task force that, that got to work uh, on making the campus safe with the uh, correct PPE, and um, uh, rules and guidelines, wearing masks all the time when on campus, everyone, the six feet uh, distance, hand washing, everything that we needed to do uh, to make the campus safe. And uh, we were able to open up and uh, you know, have resident students and have the experiential education experience that the, that the students want and that the faculty wanted to provide. So it was very successful. We also formed a COVID response task force and then a core team. And they looked at it every day. We, we, were, we were on top of it, um, making sure that everybody was safe. And if we had any uh, uh, transmission, contact tracing was done and the quarantining. And we were very, very fortunate that we had very low incidence. Well, that's great. I know one of the things I think you did is you converted your big auditorium into classrooms so you could see right. students far apart. Yeah, that, you know, we have, the advantage we have is that we're relatively small and we already had small class sizes. So we're able to use the space we had to distance people appropriately and then use uh, spaces like the auditorium for larger lectures and still have that opportunity. Some of the larger schools could not do that because there just simply was not enough space to um, have the appropriate distancing. So we were fortunate that they were able to do that. And a lot of our classes, of course, are outside as well uh, in That's our little laboratory on campus. Yeah, so, so we were able to use the outdoor space uh, appropriately. And I think future of higher education, the, the way we're going to utilize space is going to be very different. In what way? I think in, in in the design, thinking about flexibility of the classroom spaces in order to be able to, you know, uh, have different densities and move desks around, how you use the outdoor space and the connectivity around that. 
And I also think in terms of uh, remote working, you know, I, there are options right. there now that we realize some of our employees can do a great job remotely and that frees up space also on campus. Space is always an issue on any campus. And, uh, and that probably will allow us to, you know, reimagine what those spaces could be used for. Did you have any sessions where you educated the students on what was being done, the decisions and why? <laughs> Absolutely. Communication is key during something like this. So uh, we created, uh, as many universities did, a website with a COVID dashboard with communication and information uh, there. We put together an opening um, guidebook and uh, we have one for the spring as well, which lays out all the different uh, rules, uh, different ways to keep people safe. And then, um, and that was constantly updated. So every week I put out an email to the entire community, updating everyone on circumstances, uh, encouraging people to keep doing what's right. And um, hopefully somewhat inspiring to them as well. It's, it's, uh, it's challenging. There's a lot of fatigue around the, the situation. Mm -hmm. And you know, students are, you know, come to a college campus to get the experience of what it's like to live on a campus. And it was quite restricted now because of COVID. So um, that, that, uh, that resulted in us trying to be very creative and how you can still have fun in an environment where you have to make sure everybody's safe. Sounds like you're doing a great, great job. I have to move on to another subject because I know that you are a leader in Box County by utilizing something called Blue Ocean Strategy. Would you share with us what that is and how you've used it to innovate? Yeah, it's a, it's a great uh, strategy. It's, it's taking advantage of, of unmet needs that are out there um, at a reasonable cost. And so uh, Blue Ocean meaning there's not a lot of competition there. So not a red ocean where there's sharks and there's a lot of competition, but it's, it's new opportunities that are there that you can take advantage of. And um, there's very specific tools that you can use in order to achieve that. And we, we use the blue ocean strategy to put together a, a five-year comprehensive strategic plan for the university. And uh, it has been, has been wonderful, especially you know, talking about COVID and a pandemic, when you're in a crisis, it is beneficial to have a strategic plan and to look at that and not lose sight of that while you're also navigating uh, those waters. So it's helped us stay on track. Uh, timelines might be a little bit different, right? Because of the, right. the <laughs> pandemic, but it allows you to stay grounded and keep moving forward. So it was a, a wonderful tool to use and we're very happy that we did so. What are your dreams, your vision, your goals for the university going forward? And how can we, the business community, help you in that? You're our hometown university. Well, that, that's great. The, there, there's a couple of different things that, that we're really um, interested in. You, uh, the foundation of DelVal revolves around experiential education. So the, part of the vision that we developed was to be the leader in experiential education. And I'm uh, thrilled that in 2019, we received a national award for experiential education. Is that, that involved, right? Yes, that involved our... Uh, um, our Congratulations. Thank you. What we call our Experience 360 program. And that's where 100% of our students have real world experience, internships, uh, apprenticeships, these types of um, experiences tailored to their major. So how the business community can help is by providing those internships for our students. And um, that's the important thing because they get this real world experience. Be, they're able to apply the, the right, knowledge right. that they learn in the classroom, right, out, out in the real world, but also develop the networks that they need. And that is so crucial to success. So that is a, a major way that the, uh, that the community can help our students and get involved. And our outreach to the community is something we want right. to do. We want to increase our you know, industry and community partnerships. We have a fantastic partnership now with Doylestown Health 
And uh, with their help, we are developing health sciences graduate programs. And um, that has just been fantastic. So we have meetings with them. They, they help inform where the latest uh, knowledge is going and the techniques and what the students need to know. And then they're also teaching within uh, the programs as well. So extremely, well, that's exciting. Neat. <clears throat> extremely exciting. And so we can see similar type partnerships developed with others in, in the community that have um, the, de the desire to do that with us. Um, also the market at DelVal, we uh, are looking for new partners to come into that space. And that's been truly exciting oh, too. Yeah. I miss so, it. <laughs> I think we all miss it. We all miss that. And um, it was really evident. Uh, a lot of people when I go out into the community, ask me about it and, and when it's going to reopen and what it's going to look like. So we'll just have to see how that unfolds, but I'm very excited about that opportunity. Mm -hmm. And we're also looking at all of our land assets. And I was gonna say. Yeah, and, and um, making sure that we're utilizing those the best we can. And we're looking at possibly the development of a uh, 55 and plus uh, community on the property and that we can engage that community with the university, having a learning commons, and, How uh, innovative! Providing classes—it's—it's it's wonderful. Yes. Well, we really appreciate you taking the time to be with us today. As we close, is there one more thing that you'd like to say to us? Well, I think this is a wonderful community. The university has uh, benefited greatly from. Uh, the, the partnerships that we have, and we want to continue to do that. We want to make the partnerships stronger. We are a resource for the community, and I think um, we need that more than ever as we need accurate information, uh, true information, and, and the development of knowledge, and we're here to, to be of service to the community. Thank you so much, Dr. Gallo, for spending this time with us today. Be You're safe, welcome. be well and let us know going forward what we might be able to do further to assist you and your goals. We're so proud to see you as the leader of Delaware Valley University. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Vale. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.